Hi, this week we're looking at the third type of defensive signal and that is the suit preference signal. It's probably the most elegant of signals but you do have to watch the cards very carefully if you're going to pick up on partner's cards. Let's say partner knows that you're going to trump and they're going to send you a card of their suit for you to trump. Watch the card that they actually let you trump with because that in itself is a suit preference signal. If they play a highish card wanting you to trump, then they've asked you to return the higher ranked suit when you finish trumping. And if they play a low card, it's the opposite. It says my entry is in the lower ranked suit, so that's how you can get back into my hand and maybe I can give you another trump. Suit preference signals also work in no trumps and the more you practice them, the more you'll see that they happen in the defence. They're extremely helpful for partnerships, provided you're looking at the cards that partner's playing. So try the hand, see how you go. And next week I'm starting new Zoom courses, two courses, one on partnership understandings. Uh, trying to alleviate some of the agonies that make partnerships not work so well and making sure that you're on the same page and you're both very happy partners. One of them, one lesson is on what's forcing, what's not. Another lesson is on should we go to slam or not. Another one is on dealing with misfits. And another one is on when the opponents bid more, what do you do? Do you bid one more or do you double them or what the hell do you do? Very hard to make the correct decision all the time, of course. But um, the other course is on very useful doubles. Support double, the redouble, negative double, the reopening and balancing doubles. Hope you can come along to the Zoom course and have a good week, everyone. It's a hand with very little to recommend it. Three jacks, so we pass. We'll definitely be defending here. And they've reached four spades. We're on lead. Well, let's think about what to lead. Because you can't really expect to be taking a trick um, from your hand, you might make one, but it depends what partner's got. Now's the time to try a short suit. The only reason that a short suit lead, in other words, the Ten of Diamonds, would work is if you find partner with an honour, like the Ace, and they can return it, and then maybe you can get another rough later on. Leading the fourth highest club or the fourth highest heart when the opponents have clearly got plenty of points for game is not the way to beat this hand. So let's try the singleton 10. Luckily partner did have the ace and now they're returning the three. Here's where a suit preference signal comes to play. They've returned the lowest card that they've got and that in itself is a signal. They hope we're going to trump, so we are indeed going to trump. But after we've trumped, they're now telling us that the entry to their hand is in the lower ranked of the two remaining suits. We don't have a diamond and spades are trumps, so the two remaining suits are clubs and hearts. What partner is saying with this suit preference signal is, please return a club and I might be able to give you another rough. Yes, we're now able to trump that diamond and we've beaten the hand. We wouldn't expect to keep getting tricks on this hand because the opponents have got a lot of points. So it's not really important what we play now. We expect Declarer will probably take the rest of the tricks.
So we beat the hand. <clears throat> if we had let anything else, Declarer would have had time to draw trumps. Um, so they would have made five spade tricks, three heart tricks, eight, two diamonds, a ten. The only way was when we led a singleton, found partner with the ace, luckily, and they gave us the suit preference signal as to how to get back into their hand.